Good morning. We'll go ahead and start with prayer. Lord God, make heaven and earth. Help us to look into your wonderful book and to understand it. We ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ. For beside you there is no other God. Amen. The Bible is the word of God and all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and righteousness. Now, we need it to, I, I repeat every so often, I repeat this again to show you all, show you all the, the position of Israel. Israel is, a, is in a very key position, right in the center of these three huge land masses. That's where God put them. A little bitty Israel right there. But the land covers a lot more than that. But that land means it's Canaan. That's Canaan. That was one of the sons of Noah. And that means humiliated because he, humili he humiliated his father. He saw him naked. But to be humiliated means to be humble. That's what that means. Uh, whoever lives in that land is going to be humbled. And Israel is living in that land. So they've been humbled. These people to humble, to bend the knee. And they, they're one of the most proud people in the world. But that's a picture of us. That's a picture of us. That's who we are. So Israel, it's a picture. I mean, if you go to Israel right now, it's, it's, you see the Jews, are, they're black, they're Hispanic, they're white. I mean, they're German, they're Russian. They're all in there. I mean, it's a little mini world, a, a, a melting pot, as it were, in Israel. Of all the, world, of all the people in the world, there's a lot of Spanish-speaking people there. It's amazing. So this, this is really the land. It covers, when they settle that land in the millennia, it's going to go all the way from the river of the Nile all the way to the Euphrates. It's going to encompass Jordan, Syria, um, most of Iraq and part of Saudi Arabia. I mean, it's a big chunk of land. So what they have right now, it's little, little compared and part of Egypt as well. So this is the bread, folks. This is the 12 loaves of bread that they... That's, they were always supposed to be in the temple of God, which is right there in Jerusalem, to, be, to feed all the world. That's the 12 loaves of bread that's going to go out to Europe, to Africa, to Asia. That's what they were put there. To, and that's a picture of us. We are supposed to be feeding the world. We have the living bread. And so they were supposed to be feeding the world. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. And so that's, that tells you, folks, God is warning us because we now are supposed to be doing it. And the church is not doing it. So, so look at this. These are his people. He refers to them all the time, his people. And so we've been seeing the Levite, and we're going to continue to see the Levite today. The Levite is a picture. The Levite means to be joined. Levi means joined. So... That's us. We are joined to God. Because the minute God, the Spirit of God comes in us, in us, we are joined. And he says he'll never leave us or forsake us. And that's a picture of a man and a wife. Um, but there's another person we just looked at. That's the Nazarite. We just looked at that, at the Nazarite. And the Nazarite, the thing about the Nazarite is he's got power. He, 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 he vows, that's the vow of the Nazarite. If you, if you perform that vow, you have power. God is going to give you power. And that's, we saw Samson as a picture of that. But Samson played around, and that's us. We are joined to God, and we have power, but we are not taking the Lord serious. This is what the study is going to be about. So today we're going to be looking at the lighting of the of the candlestick. The lighting of the candlestick is uh, understanding. So what the Lord is showing us here, he wants us to get this understanding. We're going to be seeing that. He wants us to get this understanding of why he's given us these people to look at. So look at this. This is We're going to continue with the same thesis that's found in Romans 11.25. For I would not brethren that you should be ignorant of this mystery lest you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part has happened to israel 
until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So they're blinded to this. I mean, the fact that they were given all this power, they have this power, they're joined to God because they're the only, they're the only nation that God says, he took them from the Egypt. He says, I've taken them to be, he's never dealt with any other nation like that, to take them unto him. So this mystery, it's a secret, and Paul reveals it in the New Testament. Blindness has happened to them, partly because of their stubbornness and partly because God has a plan until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And that plan, folks, is going on right now. It's unmolested, it, it's gonna happen. The plan is gonna happen uh, because God's plan never is thwarted. Uh, so the question is, he's made the provisions this is what we're going to be looking in this study. He wants us to understand this. He's made provisions with power. He's made everything. So the thing is, am I part of the plan? This is what we're going to be looking at. Am I part of the plan? Because he's already made the provisions for us. So that's what we're looking at. And so this is the thing here. We, we left off here. Is each charge, this is now, they brought all this offering. Remember the nest right? The one, the Nazarite that didn't complete the vow, he brought nothing. He just brought, because he, he, t he touched the dead person. So, it, I mean, he, he trespassed. And so all he had to do was bring a lamb to take care of the trespass. And then we looked at the Nazarite that did complete, and we saw all that he brought. Wow. And then we come to the whole nation, and we see what they brought. And this is what we're at right now. Each charger of silver weighing 130 shekels, each bowl 70, all the silver vessels weigh 2,400 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. It's a perfect weight. It's a sac sac sacred weight. God says he's, he, he can measure correctly. God measures he's He knows what he's doing, but he's telling us this is a great cost. Look at this. The golden spoons were 12 full of incense, weighing 10 shekels apiece after the shekel of the sanctuary. All the gold, the gold of the spoons was 120 shekels. Again, he's telling us there was a great cost. And there is a great cost for what we have gotten because we get the benefit of Israel. We get that benefit. God has told us he's, he's, there's been a great cost. And of course, this is gonna to lead to the son of the Jewish people, the Jew that ultimately paid for us our salvation. But there's a cost. And he says, uh, they've been, he says there in Isaiah 42, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and, sing, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, Isaiah 42, it's amazing because that book, Isaiah, four, uh, Isaiah has 66 chapters, folks. And that's the same thing that you find in the Bible, 66 chapters. I mean, 66 books. 39 in the old, 27 in the new. When you get to the 40th book in the Bible, that's the book of Matthew. And the book of Matthew is now the New Testament. And it's amazing that when you get to the 40th chapter in Isaiah, it starts saying, speak ye comfortably. It says this, verse one says, comfort ye, comfort ye my people, says the Lord. And then verse two, it says, speak ye comfortably. She's been forgiven. So the Old Testament, she's been covered. Why? But look what it says here, folks. Perversity, that word iniquity is perversity. That's talking about sexually perversion. perversion. Why is that? Because remember he took Israel as his wife. That's the wife of Jehovah. And no, notice how many men, times, and it's amazing the references that are made in the Bible concerning Israel, how he it talks about her as a woman that was when a hoarding. Because look what it says here. Look how many times it's referred to her. Four times. And then it says she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. That's the wife of Jehovah. She messed up. She didn't do what she was supposed to do. She has received twice. That's Israel. 
Um, and, and then it says, to all 24 oxen, 60 ram, and 60 goats, and 60 lambs. That's all the oxen for the sacrifice of the peace offerings, 20 and four bullocks, 60 rams, and 60 goats, and the lambs of the first year, 60. All this is what they brought. Okay, this still has reference to the Nazarites. They had power because they brought um, the one that Nazarite they completed. And here you have Israel, and you wonder, but Israel has been rebellious. They have not completed what they were told to do. Yet God has said, look at what they brought. They bring us a story. The, the, the beauty of the Bible is it's a great Jewish story. That's what it is. This was the dedication of the altar after that it was anointed. It all talks about them. Look at everything that they bring. All these offerings. And you learn so much from the offerings, folks. Leviticus chapter 1 through 5. It's all about the offerings and what you get by what, by what they offered. It's all about Israel. And, and look what it says here. And he took and sent messes unto them from before him. But Benjamin's mess was five times so much as the others. And they drank and were merry. This verse I put there to show you the 60 animals. If you divide 60 by 5, you get 12. You get back to Israel. Israel is, is the 12. 5 is grace. And so, and it's interesting. I'm showing you, giving you so much background before I settle down. Because the Bible is so heavy, folks. It's so connected. It's so, and it gives you so much insight that even Benjamin is so special because I mentioned before that Benjamin stands for the soul. Look how Benjamin is. Benjamin is connected. The on, when the tribes divided, the only tribe that connected or joined Judah was Benjamin. And so when you get saved, your soul, spiritual circumcision happens and your body is cut off and your soul is not connected to the spirit. So at death, the spirit leaves the body and it takes the soul with it. This is why spiritual circumcision is so important. If, you don't, if you're not spiritually circumcised, if the spirit of God is not in you, then you're lost. So Benjamin is so important. And, and look at this, souls that are attached to him. This is what that has reference to. We're going back to the Levite. Those that are attached to him, okay? And look what it says here, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. It's a context. To know, the, to know God, to know God, the only way you can know him is through the Bible, and the Bible is, is the story of Jacob. All, most of the Bible, is, it's, it, most of the Old Testament is history, the history of Israel. And so that's how you're gonna know God know him through the context of the God of Jacob. Okay, that's how you get to know God. And look what it says here in Psalms 44, 10. Thou makest us to turn back from the enemy and they which hate us spoil for themselves. Spoil is booty. Spoil is when you take treasure from you, when you conquer a people, and you take their treasure. That's what it was all about in the olden days. When a nation uh, 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 conquered another nation, you got spoiled. The, 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 everybody did that. They marched in with all the spoil they got from that people. But notice here what it says. They that hate us spoil for themselves. This is speaking of Israel. The people that conquered them have take spoil. That's spoil. Now notice what it says here in the New Testament. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Amazing here, folks. That's a hard verse when you first run into it in Matthew. But Matthew, again, that's, Matthew is talking about the kingdom of heaven, which belongs to the Jew. And then it suffereth violence, because they take it by force. 
God says he wants you to be passionate to take it. And look what is, look, I'm about to show you this. Look at this. How bad do I want that treasure? It's, it's treasure. The Bible is full of treasure. But you got to know the Jew because he's the one. That treasure, the Bible says, is on a hill. It's buried upon a hill. That hill is Hebron. There Abraham buried Sarah. There Abraham is buried. There is Rebekah and Isaac buried. There is Jacob and Leah buried. Those are the fathers of the... So that's the treasure. It's there. And how bad do I want it? That's the word of God. And so he gives you all these clues, folks. All these clues. The nation of Israel, is, the better you get to know it, the better you get to know the Bible. And the better you get to know the Bible, the better you get to know our God. And that's all about getting to know our God. So here we are. And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with them, now that they brought all these things, we saw all, everything that the, land, the Israel bought, brought. All the animals, all the food, all the spoons, all the, all, all, everything that they brought, all the 12 tribes. We saw that last week. So now, once you do that, look what it says. God, Moses went into the tabernacle to speak to, with him. Okay? Then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from the mercy seat that was upon the ark of the testimony between the two cherubims. God says, you want this, this is the relationship we want to have with the Lord. And we want him to speak to us. Well, once you do this, once you, you come before him, you have access to God. We do have access to God through the priest. And so the mercy seat is this, folks. It's that the entire top of the, of the Ark of the Covenant. That's the mercy seat. And that's where one spake unto him. From there came the voice of God. Okay? And now look what he's going to tell him. He's, now he's going to talk about the lighting of the candlestick. And what is that? He wants us to understand. He wants us to get, get what's going on here. That's what he, look what he says here. And the Lord spake unto Moses. Now he speaks. Now that we've done all that, we brought, got into all everything, all the blessings that are brought. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and say unto him, When thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick. Amazing stuff. And so look at the word. And that means you got to connect this with what we just covered okay this is a building the whole bible is connected everything that was brought we now connect it because the lord says here's how you you have an intimate relationship with our god the maker of the universe he spake unto moses when you light it when you light the camps to ascend that word is ascend and and of course you find that in in the in the psalms who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in this holy place? He who has clean hands. But here, look, look what it says here. This is his presence. Who's going to come into his presence? We are qualified to come into his presence. We are the joint ones. We are, as, as it were, we have been given power. In the Old Testament, they didn't keep it. You couldn't keep it. We saw how Samson lost it once the hair was cut off. That means he lost the anointing that was in the hair. But you can't lose it now. Even Brother Eric, who has no hair, he can't lose it. You know? I just have to put that in there. You know, but see, because the Spirit of God comes inside us, he never leaves us. God is telling us, you don't lose the power. It's in there. So what are you doing? What are you doing with this power? Look what it says. This is the generation of them, of them that seek him, that seek thy face. O Jacob, Selah, who? These are the people. And now look at that. that you you want to come into his presence, and God is saying this. You can, because you, you you're qualified. The seven lamps shall give light. That's to enlighten, give greater knowledge and understanding. This is what you have when you're in his presence. 
When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. This is David, because God is constantly tell us, seek, seek my face, seek my mind. What, do I, what does the Lord want? That's what I constantly want to do. And, the Lord, and Aaron did so, and he lighted the lamps that were over against the candlestick as the Lord commanded Moses. So notice these, this word here, against, as mentioned twice here, that means opposite. Okay, against the candlestick. And it's gonna light up the place against the candlestick. So I have to show you this. That's the inside of the tent. That's the tabernacle. That's the two places that you could never see, okay? And so there's so much in there. This is why we, the Jew gives us this, folks. They give us this information. There's so much. Um, that little place there, that's called the Holy of Holies. Okay, in the Holy of Holies, you find the Ark of the Covenant. That is where the eternal Spirit of God dwells. In the Old Testament, that's where he dwelt, but that's a picture of how, where he dwells in us as well. And then you have this larger portion that was 30 feet uh, long. That's the holy place. That is the eternal soul or the heart. When the Bible speaks of the heart, that's the part. And in the heart, there's three pieces. In the, in, the, in the cubicle where God dwells, there's only one piece. That's the Ark of the Covenant. Here you have three pieces. And two of them are solid gold. I mean, in, in the soul, the, the candlestick is solid gold. And in the cubicle of the Holy of Holies, the top of the Ark of the Covenant is solid gold too interesting because that stands for deity that's deity okay so in the in the holy place you have the altar of incense you have the table of showbread and you have the candlestick and the candlestick stands for the intellect okay that's mental powers that's what that's all that's in the soul and the table of showbread that's the emotions or feelings that's what's there and then the ark, the uh, altar of incense, that stands for the will. And but there was a division in the Old Testament. There was a division between the little room and the big room. That means they couldn't connect because Adam sinned, and so that connection was taken away. That connection will be broken on the in the fortieth book of the Bible, which is Matthew. Again, references to Isaiah. So. When that is parted, when that is ripped open, you now are connected back again like that. This is what he's given us here. When that is lit up, because look what happens. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.18, the mind is darkened. If you don't have the Spirit of God, that's what you have. It's darkened. The mind is darkened. And you, there's, when we get to First and Second Corinthians, we're going to find out Paul explains this. There's a lot of information that's not available to the regular man. We can't go in there because these are spiritually discerned. But when the Spirit of God descends into a life, when he comes into, and that's what, it was, that was his dwelling place in the Old Testament. When the Spirit of God comes in, this is what happens, folks. It lights up the inside. It lights it up, and you now get understanding. Mercy... Through the mercy of God, the mind is lit up. That's the oil. That's the olive oil that burns in, the, in that lamp. So now you get enlightened. Now you, you're enlightened. And this is the only way you can understand these things. You're enlightened because look, we're told, folks, that this is close to the world. The world cannot have an understanding of these things. When they get to the soul and the spirit, there's no way they can understand that. They can only so go so far, they can go into the atoms or the protons or the electrons, and that's as far as they can go. They tell us that there's a power they don't understand, but that there's a power that, that holds everything together. Well, we know what that power is. It's the Word of God. But they, have, they can't understand that. This is close to the world. The only people that can see these things are you, that you who have the Spirit of God inside you. Because the Bible says we have the Spirit of God. We have the mind of Christ. That's what that, when you lit up that candlestick, 
That's the understanding that we get. And this work of the candlestick was of beaten gold onto the shaft thereof, onto the flowers thereof, was beaten work. What this tells us is that it was completely solid gold. It was hammered out of solid gold. This is what this is. That's deity. And I believe, folks, now I put a stand on that thing, but the Bible doesn't have a stand. And because I, I, I drew that, I put a stand on it, but that's, it never says that. So I just took it off because I think this is the picture of it. That's the brain. And I think that's what it stands for. Um, it looks like it when you, with the flowers and all. And I think that's what that, look what it says here. According unto the pattern which the Lord has showed Moses, so he made the candlestick. The, the Lord told Moses how to make it. So that's the pattern. He built it like that. And I think it's for everything that God told Moses, especially when you go into all the details of the tabernacle, is there for a reason. God, God wants to get that insight. This is the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And he shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually. It's supposed to always be lit. Whenever they were moving through the desert and they set up the tent, that had always had to be lit. And what God is telling us, we are supposed to have the mind of Christ. Always. Because look what it says in Revelation 5, 6. And behold, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamp as it had been slain, a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth unto, the, unto all the world. So those lamps, what, what is showing us here is, he's speaking of omniscience, all-knowing. So God, he's given us that mind because he, he wants us to go to him all the time because he's all-knowing. Look what it says here. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart, there is, there it is, the heart, is perfect toward him, the understanding. Am I continually seeking the face of God, his mind? Because he wants us to. He wants us to be continually seeking him. Uh, it, because it's there. I mean, through the story in the Bible. He's wanting us to do that. Because he's made provisions, folks. This is just, Look what it says here. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites from among the children of Israel and cleanse them. How? Now he's going to tell us how to approach him. Now that we have the mind of Christ, he's going to explain how to do it. How to be in his presence always. Look at this. Take the Levites. The Levites are the ones that are joined. And we are joined. Okay? We are joined because we have the Spirit of God. The Levites. Those are the joined ones. Those are the ones that have the Spirit of God. In. Okay. Cleanse them. First of all, you cleanse them. That means, thou, and thus shalt thou do unto them to cleanse them. Here's how, here's how you clean them. Sprinkle water of purifying upon them. And that water is the same one we talked about where the woman drank of it. Holy water. That was the water taken from the labor. So that's how God says, first be cleansed. And that's through the word of God. Be washed. How to approach him. Be washed, okay? And then, wherewith shall thy young man cleanse his way? By taking heed unto the, according to thy word. So that's the number one thing. And look what he says. Look what he follows with next. And let them shave all their flesh and let them wash their clothes and so make themselves clean. Okay. Remember how you could not shave or cut your hair until you performed the vow. We, we saw that. Or unless you were made unclean. If you were unclean, might as well cut the hair off and start over again. You, the vow, you had to keep the vow because that was the Nazarite vow. Here we're told, let them shave their flesh. You, say, you shave it because you're going to start the vow again. Start again. Evidently, let them shave because from now on, I want them to be clean. So first of all, be washed, be sanctified. Okay? 
And then he says, let them bring, let them take a young bullock with his meat offering, even fine flour mingled with the oil. Here's the other thing he wants you to understand. Bring a young bullock and flour with oil. That's the meat offering. And another young bullock shall thou take for a sin offering. Okay? So this is, this is how the joined ones are supposed to approach him. And thou shalt bring the Levites there before the tabernacle of the congregation. Bring them and gather the whole assembly of the children of Israel together. And thou shalt bring the Levites before the Lord and the children of Israel shall put their hands upon the Levites. All the people, the nation of Israel are now gonna put their hands upon the Levites. These people that are the joined the join ones to approach. So they do that to them, they place their hands, they're transferring them to the Levite, okay? That's what you, and we do that before the church when we pray for somebody and we lay hands upon them. We're transferring us to them. They're, we're gonna be connected to them. They're gonna, whatever work they do is gonna be for us. That's why we do that to missionaries and so on. So the Levites were now gonna be taking the place of the whole people of, of, of Israel. And Aaron shall offer the Levites before the Lord for an offering of the children of Israel that they may execute the service of the Lord. So that's a wave offering. The Levites become a wave offering unto the Lord. It's like saying, Lord, these are your people and they're gonna be working for us. We are gonna be doing your work, but they're gonna do it for us. And that's what, well, that's what he's saying. The Levites, and now look what the Levites do. And the Levites shall lay their hands upon the heads of the bullocks, and thou shalt offer the one for a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering. You have two bullocks, okay? They're substitutes. So the Levites now put their hands on the two animals, the two bullocks. The one for a sin offering, and the other one for a burnt offering. Ah, so now we know what the other bullock was for. That's the sin offering. That's the, that's the burnt offering. Okay, and to make an atonement for the Levites. Here's the third thing that they, you gotta have to be in the presence of God. This is to be justified, okay? Because that's being forgiven, okay? And thou shalt set the Levites before Aaron and his sons. They're not prepared. When the Levite went through all this ritual, he is now prepared and offered them for an offering unto the Lord. What? The, the two animals. Those are offered. And that's like the, the animals died for the Levites. The Levites take our place for us. And so whatever work is done, they're perfectly, they're accepted. The Lord accepts those animals accepts the Levites, accepts Israel as a people. Israel is accepted. That's why I'm saying they, they, whatever work they've done has been accepted. Now look at this, folks. I'm about to finish here. This is amazing. The, the burnt offering, that's love. God tell, what God's telling you, you're loved. And the other one, you're forgiven. That's covered. You're covered. They're covered. Israel's covered. They're loved and they're forgiven. Thus shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel. That's the ritual they had to do. But look what he's showing us, folks. Look at this. Separate the vow. I mean, the Nazarite vow. This is how, that's what this is showing us. And the Levites shall be mine. Because that's, he's saying that. They're mine. So Because they've been washed. They've been sanctified. And they've been justified. And they've been justified. Wow! Look what Paul tells us, folks. That's how. This is how you come into the Lord, into His presence. First Corinthians six eleven says, "And such were some of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified." Look at are you are you are not will be you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by his spirit. It's not your work, he did it. 
Remember, the, the Levite just stood there while all this was done for him. We have been covered. This is us. We have made, been made clean. We have been made holy. And we, have, we are innocent, as it were, before God. But there's something missing, folks. There's something missing. You say, ah, glorification. No, 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 no. That's in heaven. That's when everything is done. God is going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But there's something else. What is that something else? It's this, folks. We didn't cover that. What is that? That's the meat offering. What is that? That's a voluntary and bloodless sacrifice. You didn't have to do that. But it was, it was Paul tells us, you should do it. And notice what it says. It had oil in it. Not like the woman that brought her barley flour. It had no oil. This one has oil. That means God, what God is saying, the only people that can do this are the people that have the Spirit of God in them. They're the only people that are qualified. Look at this. And after that shall the Levites go in to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall, plen and shall cleanse them. And thou shalt cleanse them and offer them for an offering. After they've been covered, the Levites are now, because they're about to take into this 40-year hike. Remember, this is all in preparation for the wilderness hike. Now they can go in there and do the work of the tabernacle. Now, because they're, all this has been done for them. But that one part is missing. What is that part? After that, after that, they've been made clean or whole. They've been sanctified. They've been justified. After that, you can come into his presence. But there's something missing. What is that? Because look, look at this. Look at, look at what Romans 12 one says. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's, God doesn't force you to do that. But Paul says, present, let's come into his presence, your bodies, a bloodless sacrifice. Do us, you, 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 you've been covered, you're prepared. <clears throat> you're washed, you're sanctified, you're justified. You can do the work of God. God says you can do the work of God. That's what he's saying here. You, you're good to go. What is that? To offer your sacrifice. What sacrifice is that? is to be made bread. That's what the flour is. The meat offering is flour. And flour, what do you do with flour? Am I a living sacrifice? Am I, that's what I'm saying. Because that converts to bread. You become bread for the other people. For God placed, placed them in the middle of all this lands for all the other people. That's what he's doing with us too. And he's already made the preparations. Have I presented my body? My body. This is what the Lord is saying. And we'll, we were able to cover it. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. Thank you for your kindness towards us, oh Lord. And thank you for making us ready and prepared, Lord, being washed, uh, sanctified, and justified. All your work and all that remains is that we do our part, Lord, to offer ourselves up to be a living sacrifice for you. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Help us now to prepare our minds and our hearts to receive your word. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Good, good.